For today, I want to talk about uh, Teddy Roosevelt as a leader of the progressive movement. Um, for the for the students who've been in class uh, as this week, we've talked. I've shared a little bit about Teddy Roosevelt as we've watched some of the videos. Hopefully, yesterday you guys got to uh, watch those three videos and do a reflection on some of the big accomplishments of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have a short answer that will be a graded assignment on uh, uh, some of his progressive actions. Uh, for today, I really want to talk about two big moments or two big things as it relates to Teddy Roosevelt, um, and that is the square deal. Um, and, uh, and then on the second page here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the presidential election of 1912. So I'll, I'll try to keep this quick. I'm going to start a timer real quick um, so I don't go too long. Um, but uh, but if we can get the square deal and the election of 1912, we'll be good to go. Um, Teddy Roosevelt's progressive goals eventually become known as the square deal. Sometimes you hear this. Presidents, they call their agenda, the things they want to do, with a nickname. Um, JFK called his agenda the new frontier. Or um, Teddy Roosevelt's cousin, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, called his plan the new deal. Well, Teddy Roosevelt, he didn't call his his ideas, anything up front. He just started doing when he became president. He started doing this and doing that. But eventually he gave a speech uh, that was known as the square deal speech. Um, here's an excerpt. Um, he said, there must, there must be ever present in our minds the fundamental truth that in a republic such as ours, the only safety is to stand neither for uh, nor against any man because he is rich or because he is poor because he is engaged in one occupation or another, because he works with his brains or with his hands. Uh, we must treat each man on his worth and merits as a man. We must see that each is given a square deal because he is entitled to no more and no less. Um, from that speech, Roosevelt's accomplishments kind of take on this nickname of the square deal. A few things about that. One, he talks a lot in here about a man and a man's merits. He's speaking... Uh, in masculine terms, but he means mankind. In fact, when Teddy Roosevelt eventually runs for president again in 1912, he will be nominated by a, by a woman, by Jane Addams, and he will advocate for women to get the right to vote. So, um, you know, he's not being necessarily sexist, um, or at least as sexist as you might think when he says a man. He, he I think he's talking about personhood and, and mankind. Um, the other thing about this idea of a square deal, when you look at a square, and, and not to go all geometry on you, but it's got equal, it's equilateral, equal, equal angles, uh, equal angular, I guess, uh, 90 degrees, right angles. If at any point one of the angles gets a little more than 90 degrees or a little less, it's no longer a square. If if any side gets a little bit longer, it's no longer a square. It has to be held uh, in perfect equality. And that really sums up how Teddy Roosevelt saw um, his goals as president. Um, in order to, to accomplish uh, his square deal, Teddy Roosevelt, it, it's easy to kind of memorize them as the three C's. Uh, and being that it's the square deal, I really wish there were four C's, but I've only got three. Um, and the, the, the three big things, the three C's of the square deal are corporations, consumers, and conservation. And these three C's really go along with the videos that you guys were watching. Corporations. Teddy Roosevelt wanted to control them. Sometimes this is called trust busting, but remember he did not bust up all trust. Um, he, Teddy Roosevelt said some trusts were good, some were bad. He went after what he felt were the bad ones, the ones that did not treat people equally. And he, he said the ones that did treat people equal or that were good for the public could stay. So, for example, in the video, he busted up J.P. Morgan's Northern Securities Company, but Rockefeller's Standard Oil, he never went after those. Corporations, he felt he needed to control. Consumers, um, these are average Americans, and Teddy Roosevelt operates under the belief that he needs as president or as the government to protect them. Um, some of his big laws that he signed off on were called the Pure Food and Drug Act, um, and the Meat Inspection Act. A big trend of the progressive era was what they called truth in labeling. Back then, you might get a food product and you would have no idea what was actually in it. You know, today we might make jokes about energy drinks or, or processed food and all the, the hidden contaminants, but at least today, 
there is some transparency. We have labels, we have nutrition guidelines, we have uh, regulations in food production uh, places. That all starts back with Teddy Roosevelt and the Pure Food and Drug Act. Uh, the Pure Food and Drug Act will eventually become the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration that monitors um, the safety and the contents of our food. Uh, the Meat Inspection Act was a response, if you remember, the muckraker uh, Upton Sinclair, he wrote a book called The Jungle, talking about how nasty the meatpacking industry was, uh, and Roosevelt uh, passed the law in response to that. We also watched a video on the coal strike, and while you might be tempted to see that video all about the mine workers, and Teddy Roosevelt was doing right by the m mine workers, I really think the heart behind what he did in that video was to protect consumers. He was worried about people not having coal to heat their houses. He was worried about riots in the street and protecting uh, the national good. He was protecting consumers. And, uh, and then finally, the last video um, also hit on this, conservation. Um, Teddy Roosevelt wanted to prevent wasting our resources. Um, now, it's worth noting, and, and it did say this in the video, but you might have missed it. Teddy Roosevelt was not a strict preservationist. He didn't, he wasn't like this, like, nutso environmentalist that said, never, ever, ever, ever touch um, our natural resources. Um, but he did, uh, he did say we need to preserve, protect, conserve our resources that, so that they're there for future generations. He set aside hundreds of millions of acres in national forests and parks and historic landmarks under the Antiquities Act. Okay, so that's Teddy Roosevelt's square deal. Um, we've watched videos on it. Hopefully this lays it out nice and neat so you can maybe memorize some of this stuff a little bit better, but the three C's. Now, the last thing I want you to see is uh, the presidential election of 1912. Um, this is when Teddy Roosevelt tried to run for a third term. During his second term as president, Roosevelt promised not to do this. He said, I'm not going to rerun for a third term. So he went away. Uh, but his handpicked successor, William Taft uh, from Cincinnati, uh, he doesn't live up to expectations. And Teddy wants to come back in 1912 and, and, and retake the mantle of president. Um, the Republicans, his party, they won't give him the nomination. They say, you know what? We're with Taft now. Taft is going to be our nom nom nominee. And Roosevelt is furious. He splits the, the Republican Party, he storms out of the convention, and he joins a new political party called the Progressive Party. And its nickname is the Bull Moose Party because Teddy Roosevelt said, I'm as mad as a bull moose. Uh, so Teddy Roosevelt is going to run for a third term in 1912. Um, here's the results. Um, I'll zoom in just a little bit if I can. Um, and you can see uh, Roosevelt states that he wins are in green. Uh, Taft wins these states in red. Uh, you can kind of see some of the, uh, the percentages of the popular and electoral vote there. In the end, um, this is the best a third party candidate has ever done. Roosevelt is the most successful third party candidate in American history. He got 20, 28%. Uh, of the popular vote, and he won several states in the Electoral College. However, if you look at the map and you look at how the electoral votes came out, this was not a close election. Uh, because Teddy Roosevelt split the Republican Party, the Democrat, Woodrow Wilson, will become president. He's going to be the last of these so-called progressive presidents. Um, why does this matter? You know, it's just one election and, and Roosevelt, Roosevelt ran split. Well, this election in 1912 has big implications on history. Of course, it's going to be Wilson who will be president when several amendments get passed, including women gaining the right to vote. And whoever won this election was going to be president when World War I breaks out as well. Um, you, we'll talk about this in our next unit on World War I, but the United States is going to choose to be neutral. If Teddy Roosevelt had been president, um, we probably wouldn't have been neutral. So um, this is one of those important kind of turning points in American history that really shapes the rest of the progressive era uh, and other events uh, throughout the world.
All right. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. That's a little bit on Teddy Roosevelt. You'll have a short answer tomorrow, uh, and then we will be finishing the progressive era next week. Thanks for, thanks for watching.